How's it going guys? In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this plasma glass or ball, whatever you want to call it here, all done procedurally within Blender's node system. We're going to get into that right after this quick message. This tutorial is brought to you by The Real Time Materials, an add-on with 200 ready-to-use materials. It has a wide range of materials for any type of style and look you want for any scene you're working on. Just add them right in the viewport and use the simple controls to edit their parameters. If you want to learn more, hit the link in my bio. Now let's get back into the tutorial. All right, we're back and this is the orb that we're gonna be creating here. I just made this simple scene right around it with an HDRI, but we are gonna focus here on the plasma ball. So we're gonna go ahead and go here to general and just make a new tab here. So I'm gonna go ahead. Now, because this is procedural, this works in any object you want, which is really cool. I'm gonna use an icosphere and then we're gonna go ahead and just subdivide it just like that. And now we have a ball. So let's go straight into shading. Now, one thing to know is this can only work in cycles. Having volume within an object is a cycles only feature for the time being. So make sure you are in the cycles render engine. I'm going to go ahead and hit the drop down and click on scene world scene light so we can use one of Blender's default HDRIs. And I just want it to be gray. So what we're going to do is we're going to click new and uh, we're going to make this a transmissive material here. So we're gonna turn on transmission and bring the roughness all the way down. Now we have some glass. So we're gonna go ahead and hit Shift A, search and get in a principled volume. We're gonna put the volume straight here into the volume. And now we have some volume within our scene here. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click on scene world, scene lights and start working on the volume within our glass. So I'm gonna go ahead and get in a color ramp. So Shift A, search, color ramp, and we're gonna plug the color into the emission color and bring the density down to zero. So what you can do now is bring the emission strength up to C, now that's working, there's volume within this, and we're gonna go ahead and get in a noise texture. So plug the noise texture right into here, and I'm gonna hit with the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, it comes with Blender by default, just enable it in the add-ons, hit Control T, and then we're gonna use the object coordinate. So let's go ahead and bring the black portion in, and now we're gonna see some volume. Now let's go ahead and go further with this. So we're gonna get in a Musgrave texture. Just bring this on this side, get in a Musgrave texture, plug that there. Now we have what looks like smoke, and then we're gonna bring that scale down to maybe two, actually maybe one, maybe bring it up just a little bit more to get some detail. Now we have that. So you can go ahead and bring that emission strength up and then we're gonna go and then we're gonna take this here and just play with the color ramp and then you can bring this portion in to kind of solidify that volume. And then here you can just also change the color of your volume as well. So now we have this, we can add some more detail with a really cool trick I've done quite a few times here on the channel. So we're gonna go ahead and get in a new noise texture, plug it right there it's kind of going haywire, so we want to control how much of this we're using. So we're going to go ahead and get a mix RGB. Plug that there, plug the vector into color two, and then just bring that to this side. So what we're going to do is just bring that factor in until we start getting some kind of ripples in our noise texture. So you can see how that kind of works there. So we can bring this in, and if you want to have more control, maybe more roughness here, I mean, uh, more detail, you can go ahead and bring this maybe up to a 12, and then you can bring the scale down here. And then now we have some really cool plasma along with some glass. So if we get that HDRI back here into the scene, you can see how that's kind of working with our glass. It's best to have a dark background to contrast with this glass. So now that we have glass, you can put a dark background on it and really play with lighting so that because right now it's hard to tell that there's glass in it. So that's one thing you'd want to do is go ahead and maybe add some uh, some area lights here, maybe bring it up. And so that's how you can start communicating that, that this is a glass ball. But I will leave that up to your creative direction, how you want to approach the lighting around that. In my particular case, what I did was I put two area lights, one at the back here, one at the back there, and then I made a quick little material and a dark background. 
with an HDRI also reflecting on it so you get this really beautiful scene. So the way to make this look the best is really hone in on your reflection. So I made really skinny area lights and an interior HDRI and you'll get a beautiful render or you can place this plasma orb thing in any scene you want that it works in. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned some stuff and I will see you in the next tutorial.